Good morning, kids. Welcome back to the Arctic. We're going to learn about another fascinating animal. I'm really excited about it, but we have our lesson story. Are you ready to hear it? Teacher Kathy will tell it to us this morning. Hi, boys and girls. Look at this spring weather again. I'm loving it. Have you ever had to do something that was really, really hard? I have. Jesus did something really, really hard for us. After sharing supper in our story last week, Jesus and the disciples walked to a garden. Pray for me, Jesus said to his friends. Then he went a little ways away to pray. He knew he was going to die very soon. Father, he prayed, I don't want to suffer, but if it's your will, I will do it. God sent an angel to encourage Jesus and give him words of comfort. When Jesus went back to his friends, he found them sound asleep just when Jesus needed them most. Then, in the middle of the night, the Jewish leaders came with soldiers to arrest Jesus. They had all of their soldier gear. They probably had swords. They probably wore helmets. They probably wore their armor. And they came to take Jesus and take him to the high priest. Peter followed. He slipped into the yard and sat near the fire what, that the guards had built. A servant girl says, that's one of Jesus' followers, pointing at Peter. Peter was afraid. I don't even know Jesus, he said. Pretty soon another man stared at Peter. You must be one of Jesus' special friends, he commented. I am not, Peter insisted. Later, another man looked at Peter. This must be one of Jesus' disciples, he said. I don't know what you're talking about, Peter shouted. Jesus heard. He looked at Peter with his eyes filled with love and forgiveness. Peter felt terrible. He was so ashamed. He hurried away, crying. The guards put a blindfold on Jesus. Have you ever worn a blindfold? It goes around your eyes like this, and then it's tied in the back, and you can't see anything, can you? One man hit Jesus after they put the blindfold on him. And one said, if you're a prophet, tell us who hit you. The Jewish leaders gathered around him and said, are you the Messiah? They asked Jesus. Jesus answered them, I will soon be sitting at God's right hand. The leaders showed the anger on their faces. They wanted Jesus to die right then. They thought that something should happen to someone who called himself God. But the Jewish leaders had to get permission from the Roman governor, Pilate. The lead leaders led Jesus to Pilate. Pilate didn't believe this, the lies that they were telling him about Jesus. But you know what? He was afraid of the Jewish leaders. Finally, Pilate agreed to do what they wanted. Take him away, he ordered. Soldiers began to make fun of Jesus. They dressed Jesus in a purple robe, maybe like this. They made a crown of sharp thorns, kind of like this right here, and they put it on Jesus' head. Do you think that would hurt? It had thorns on it, like roses, rose thorns, and those things hurt. They knelt down, and they pretended to honor Jesus. Then you know what they did? They spit on him. But Jesus didn't fight back. His heart was breaking, but he wasn't angry at the leaders or the soldiers. 
He forgave them because he loved them. Jesus would die for all of the people. He would die for you and for me. Can you sing a song with me today, Teacher Marcy? Can you come and help us and maybe you can show the kids the, the um, motions for it? It's Jesus loves me because Jesus loves all of us, doesn't he? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Nice job. Can't wait till we're back in Sabbath school and we can sing a lot. Our memory verse today is, You are worthy, God, to receive glory and honor and power. It's found in Revelation 4.11. Can you say that with me? You are worthy, God, to receive glory and honor and power. Bye, kiddos. See you next week with another story. All right, boys and girls. Today we're going to learn about another animal that lives in the Arctic tundra. Come on over here. I want to show you a couple of pictures. Do you remember what tundra is? Tundra is the ground up at the top of the world that is frozen some of the year, but in the summertime for a little while, the snow melts and some shrubs and some grasses and some mosses grow. There aren't big trees, are there? Let's look at another picture. Here's another picture. This is tundra over here. You can see the big, snowy mountains in the background and you can see the bushes growing. I think I have one more picture. Ooh, this is beautiful, isn't it? The grasses are starting to turn orange. Maybe this picture was taken in the fall and there's still some green bushes growing, but as far as you can look, there's not trees growing, is there? Just some bushes and the beautiful snowy mountains in the background. Well, some places in there, there's marshy areas and a little bit further south or down closer towards the equator, the middle of the world, there are some trees that start to grow. But the animal that we're going to learn about today is found in the tundra. I can't wait to find out what animal it is. My goodness, boys and girls, I hear something rustling around in the bushes. What do you think it is? Huh. Well, look at that. Hi, Teacher Marcy. How are you this happy Sabbath? It's Marty the Moose. Hi, Marty. How are you? We uh, thought we heard something rustling around back there. I was just having a quick snack. Excellent. Well, I'm here talking to the boys and girls in Sabbath school, and they would love to learn about another special animal from the tundra. And I bet that Marty can help us learn all about that animal. Sure, teacher. I'd be happy to help. Well, we'd like to learn about the moose today, and you should be an expert on that. Well, absolutely. I can tell you anything you want to know. What would you like to know first about the biggest member of the deer family? Well, you look pretty big, Marty. How tall are you exactly? Oh, I'm about six and a half feet tall at my shoulder. And that's not counting my head or my antlers. Did oh. you notice my antlers? I did. Quite a big rack I have on my head, huh? 
why I heard the biggest set came off my granddaddy at six and a half feet wide. Mine are, well, they're about four and a half feet across right now. Well, I have a tape measure. Should we show the kids how big that is? That's a great idea. Do you have a picture too? I do. Let's find out how big Marty's antlers are. So he first of all said that his are, oh, Marty, I think you're exaggerating. Yours, yours aren't even a foot across. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see how big a moose's are. Okay, so they can be from one side of their antlers to the other side. They can be from four and a half feet, that's four and a half feet, to whoo, six and a half feet across. That is a big set of antlers. Let's look over here at a picture of a moose and his antlers. So we just measured, that would be like measuring from this side all the way across to that side. And here is a moose with his antlers. Those are pretty, pretty big. So Marty, I'm curious, those are big antlers. How much do those antlers weigh? Oh, about 60 pounds. 60 pounds? Phew! I would have a headache if I wore a hat that heavy. Doesn't your head hurt? Not a bit. I have strong muscles in my neck so it doesn't bother me. Hey, Teacher Marcy, I think 60 pounds is too heavy for these boys and girls. But there's a bag over there that weighs about 30 pounds, as much as just one of my antlers. Would you like to try and lift it and show the boys and girls? Oh, sure. Oh my goodness, let me drag it over here. This is a pound or a bag of dog food, and it actually only weighs 22 pounds. Do you have a bag at home of dog food or something else that might weigh close to 30 pounds? If you do, you can look for it and then see if you can lift it up. This is about how much only one of Marty's antlers weighs, up to 30 pounds each. Phew, that was heavy. Do you know something else? What's that? Jesus made us moose pretty special. Every year we shed our antlers in the winter to conserve our energy, but then come April, next month, we grow a bigger and better set. Shed? That's a small building, isn't it? Marty, you put your antlers in a shed every winter? <laughs> no, shed, like lose. We lose our antlers. You lose your antlers? Why can't you keep track of them? They're on your head. Not lose them like I misplace them and wander off and need to find them. They fall right off my head. Your antlers fall off? I'd like to see that. And you grow a new set of antlers every year? Yup. It takes three or four months to grow a new pair and each year they are a little bit bigger. Wow, that is special, isn't it boys and girls? Now, Marty, I'm really curious. I'm going to come over here and look at that flap of that floppy thing under your chin. Do you see that, boys and girls? Well, yes, that's called a dewlap. Mine is pretty long, wouldn't you say? A do what? A dewlap. It's a flap of skin that hangs loosely from under my chin. Huh, a dewlap, you say. How long is a moose's dewlap? Mine's only a few inches <laughs> long, but it can get as long as two feet. Do you like it? Well, honestly, not really. Our chins are smooth, not floppy. Well, just have a look. Don't I look beautiful? Say, teacher, do you have a picture of a moose with his dewlap? Do you think Marty looks beautiful, boys and girls? Let's look over here and look at a moose's dewlap. Here's an adult moose. And look right here, there's a floppy 
piece of skin covered in fur that hangs right from that moose's chin, and it is called a dewlap. Marty, I'm so interested. How much do you weigh? Well, I weigh about 1,800 pounds. My wife weighs about 1,300 pounds, and she will most likely have twins this year. Twins? Wow! How much will each calf be? Oh, each calf is only about 30 pounds at birth, about as much as that bag of dog food you lifted. Oh, yeah. By the time they are half a year old, they'll be about 300 pounds. That's about what you weigh, right, teacher? Hold on a minute. <laughs> Not quite. You're funny, Marty. I have a picture of a moose calf. Can I show it to the kids? Oh, that would be great. Okay, come on over here, kids. Let's look again at our moose calf. So here's a, it's a, this is a cow. She has a dewlap too, you can see right here. And look, she has twins, two baby moose calves. Hey, Marty, what do you like to eat? I'm an herbivore. An herbivore. That means you only like to eat plants, right? Pretty close. Let's see, I like willow, birch and aspen twigs, horsetail, roots, marsh weeds and grasses, but my favorite are those marsh weeds and the bulbs of the water lily. Those are pretty hard to find though. It's a little cold for the bulbs to be tender. That's why I spend most of my time in the tundra where it isn't so cold all the time. When the water freezes in the winter, then I eat the nuts of the forest trees and tree bark. Huh, boys and girls, I have a picture of a moose eating. Should we take a peek at it over here? Here's the moose. He's standing in the water because he likes to eat the marsh grasses that grow in the, in the water. And look at that, he puts his face right down inside the water. Marty, I'm curious, how do you get the marsh weeds on the bottom and the bulbs without drowning? I can't put my nose underwater and eat at the same time. I just stick my head down under the water and I hold my breath. Jesus made me special. I can hold it for over three minutes. Three minutes? That's a really long time. Boys and girls, you might have to try later and see how long you can hold your breath. But we learned, Marty, a couple weeks ago about um, seals. And they can hold their breath for up to 20 minutes. That's over six times as long as you can. But I'm glad we don't have to eat from the bottom of a marsh, aren't you, boys and girls? God sure did make you special. 20 minutes? Wow! I still think I'm pretty special. Oh, of course you are. There's something else pretty special about me. What's that? I may be big, but I swim fast. The other day, I was racing two men in a kayak, and I won! No, <laughs> no way! You're huge! How did you win? I'm just a good swimmer, I guess. I'd say God made me special. I can run fast, too. When I'm afraid, I can run up to 35 miles an hour. Wow, that is pretty fast. I can't even run that fast. Boys and girls, you'll have to get in your car with your parents later and have them drive 35 miles an hour, and then you'll know how fast Marty the Moose can run. And I eat a lot in a day. You eat a lot? How much is that? Well, an adult moose like me can eat 40 to 60 pounds of vegetation each day. Oh my, that's more than that bag that I lifted a little bit earlier. Say, Marty, since you blend in so well with your surroundings, well, not right now, because you're in the snow, but when you're in the tundra, you blend in so well with your surroundings, even though you're very big, what do your predators, like the wolf, look for when they're tracking you? 
Well, my footprint, it's really distinctive, you know. It is, how is that? Well, it's big to begin with and slightly larger than an elk and similar to a deer, but twice as big. It can be 10 inches long. Wow. Teacher Marcy, do you have a picture of a moose print to show to the boys and girls so they can see how big 10 inches is? I sure do. Let's take a look over here. So first of all, this is a picture of a moose track in the snow. We can't tell how big it is, but if our next picture will show us. So here is the moose print that the moose left when it was walking in the mud and the dirt. And here's the picture of a man's foot right next to the moose track. So a moose track is almost as big as an adult male's foot. I'd sure hate to meet that foot. Hey, Teacher Marcy, can I ask the boys and girls some questions about me to see if they were paying attention? You sure can. Where do I live? Do you remember where Marty likes to live? Yep, he likes to live in the tundra. How much do my antlers weigh? Ooh, that's a great question. Do you remember, kids, they weighed a little bit more than the bag I had. Each antler weighs 30 pounds, so together they can weigh up to 60 pounds. And what's this floppy thing under my chin called? Ooh, that's a great question. Do you remember, kids? Marty has a dewlap, doesn't he? How long can I hold my breath? Ooh, that's great. Do you remember how many minutes? In fact, come back over here. I want to show you two more pictures that I forgot to show you earlier. Go back one more, teacher Kathy. Go back the other way. Keep going. One more. Oh, I know. There we go. Okay, so here's the moose eating. Let's click ahead one. Look at this moose right here. Marty the moose can put his head. In fact, this moose is almost all the way under the water. His head is clear under the water and he can put his head clear down and eat those grasses off the bottom of the marsh. Do you remember how long he can hold his breath? Three whole minutes. Isn't that crazy? Do you have any more questions for us, Marty? One last question. Okay. How fast can I run? Faster than me, do you remember, kids? 35 miles an hour. That is crazy. God did make you pretty special, Marcy. Marty, I called Marty Marcy, that's funny. God sure did make you special, Marty. And I am so glad that you could be here today to teach us all about you. Can you wave to Marty, kids? Bye, Marty. Bye, Teacher Marcy. Bye, kids. Have a happy Sabbath, Marty. See you soon. Okay. Wow, I had fun learning about that silly moose, didn't you? All right, well, don't forget, we'll be here at the window from 1030 to 1130 on Sabbath morning, handing out a craft, a moose craft today, and an activity and a special Arctic treat. And we hope that you come and see us. Marty will be here too. All right. Let's close with prayer. Can you fold your hands and close your eyes? Dear Heavenly Father, we've had so much fun learning about the different Arctic animals, and we want to thank you for so many things today. We want to thank you, first of all, for your love for us. We're so glad that you love us. In fact, you love us so much that you sent your Son to die for our sins so that we can go to heaven to live with you someday soon. And we want to thank you for all these amazing animals that we're learning about, like the moose. And we want to thank you for spring. Please be with us today. Help us to have a happy Sabbath. We love you. Amen. All right, kids. We'll see you next time.